Since the NBA draft, it's been hard to escape all the coverage of Bronny and him joining the Lakers. Most NBA fans knew that this day would come, but considering that Bronny's lone season at USC wasn't the greatest statistically, and the fact that he had a major health scare, most people didn't expect Bronny to enter his name in this year's draft. And even when LeBron was asked about that possibility earlier this year at the All-Star Weekend, he shared that it was up to Bronny and that he would weigh his options and see what's best for him. Is there another one and done in your household or are we going to see him a couple of years <laughs> at USC? Um, it's up to him. It's up to the kid. Obviously, um, we're going to go through the whole process. He's still in the in season now. Uh, we're going to weigh all options and we're going to let the uh, the kid make the decision if he wants to. Uh, know, I know it's on. not financial, so let's... It's definitely not financial. <laughs> let's go. But he's in the league now in what has been a carefully crafted plan by Clutch Sports. And me saying this is not even a reference to the whole nepotism discussion. But there's an issue with Bronny's draft situation which I believe is not talked about enough so before we jump into it be sure to like this video let's get to 200 likes on this one now let's get into it with averages of 4.8 points 2.1 assists and 2.8 rebounds on 37% shooting from the field and 26% from three it was clear that Bronny just wasn't ready to step into a role as an impactful rotation player in the NBA at this current moment most college players with these averages wouldn't consider entering the draft, and there's even one of Bronny's teammates who averaged 13 points and was arguably the second best player on that team, but even he went undrafted. As we know, Bronny did enter the draft despite his below average stats in college, and that was red flag number one with Bronny's draft process. At the time of the draft, he was also less than a year removed from heart surgery to treat a congenital heart defect, but he was cleared by doctors who were quote very confident in Bronny's full recovery and his return to basketball. And to be fair, he did play 25 games in college, so it doesn't seem to be a huge issue at this moment, but heart issues and cardiac problems have been career ending for many NBA players and college athletes in the past. So health is still a bit of a question for Bronny and it will continue to be for at least his first couple of years in the league, and that was red flag number two. In an attempt to address some of these question marks and show that he's an NBA-ready prospect, Bronny ended up at the NBA Draft Combine, where he showed his athleticism with a 40-inch vertical and his feel for the game that many have talked about for a long time, but that was pretty much it because in some other areas he showed that he's still underdeveloped. And this is not my opinion, it is actually something that was pointed out in one report about Bronny from two NBA scouts who were at the Combine. This is their take after watching him play. Scout one. I still don't think he's ready, but he did some good things. You can see he has good vision, makes right passes, takes good shots. He's probably going to need more time. If the Lakers don't draft him, I don't see anyone drafting him. The other scout I talked to should be a point guard based on his size, but he can't run an offense. Every bigger player who switched on him scored. He's comp a poor man's Davion Mitchell. That report gave us a general consensus of Bronny James among NBA front offices, and it reflects the general sentiment that Bronny is just not ready. The expectation is that he's going to be a 3 and D player, but he shot 26.7% from three at USC, which was the lowest on the team for anyone who attempted more than three shots. And although he's shown to be a solid defender in the summer league, his size also puts him at risk of being a liability on defense. So even the things that are supposed to be his bread and butter are not as sharp as they need to be at the moment. And that's not to say that he can never be ready because he has a high upside and after all, he did develop into a McDonald's All-American and a legit D1 player, so he can be NBA ready just with a bit more time. So it's clear that there's been an element to this whole process that makes it look like Bronny was rushed through it, which is contrary to what LeBron shared in that interview at the All-Star Weekend, and the moves that followed the Combine show just how much Bronny's camp failed to stick to that plan. After the Combine, Bronny's agent Rich Paul made it known that he would not let Bronny sign a two-way deal, meaning that he wasn't entertaining the thought of Bronny bouncing between the NBA and the G League, which is usually the case for late second round picks. And less than a week later, he announced that Bronny had decided to remain in the NBA draft, foregoing his college eligibility. And this also signaled that Bronny was going all in on the NBA. And after that, it was reported that Rich Paul was calling NBA teams and asking them not to draft Bronny because the Lakers intended to take him at the 55th spot. So here we have a below average NBA prospect who's clearly underdeveloped with no plan to return to college whose camp is not going to entertain the thought of him going to the G League, and on top of that, his agent is warning 29 teams not to draft him. These moves are all the proof you need to see that Clutch Sports took matters concerning Bronny's career into their own hands, which again is the exact opposite of what LeBron talked about during the All-Star break. So why would they do that? From what I could gather, it could be one of two things. One is LeBron's wish to play with Bronny before he retires. Ooh. 
way I've been waiting for this. Main event right here now, check ball. All the hype and excitement we're seeing today is a combination of what we've been seeing from Bronny for nearly a decade. His whole basketball journey has pretty much been spent in the public eye. From his blue chip mixtapes to his AAU games back when he was teammates with Mikey Williams, to his high school days at Sierra Canyon with D-Wade's son, Bronny James has always had a camera recording him at every stage of his basketball career. I mean, you can even find his first dunk on YouTube. When you pair it with LeBron's longevity, which started to really stand out when he was still a top 2 player at like 35, you see that it created a longing among many people to see the two of them sharing the court together, especially because it looked very possible. And nobody showed more excitement about this possibility than LeBron James himself. And the closer it got to reality, the more vocal he became about it. Who do you want to play with? Bronny is number one on my list. He's number one on my list that I want to play with for sure. What's left for you? What do you need to do in your career before you can hang it up? I need to be on the floor with my boy. Um, I got to be on the floor with Bronny. LeBron has made it clear that this is something he wants to check off of his career bucket list, but Bronny, on the other hand, seems to distance his basketball career from his dad's every chance he gets. I've heard this before. Uh, I just want to, you know, have people know my name is Bronny James not being you know, identified as just LeBron James' son. LeBron even revealed that the main thing that drives Bronny in his basketball career is to make a name for himself, which is exactly why he goes by Bronny and not LeBron James Jr. But back to my main point, all those moves made by Clutch Sports after the Combine showed that they had a carefully crafted plan to have Bronny land on the Lakers in order to allow him to team up with LeBron. And it makes sense because LeBron also just signed a 1 plus 1 deal, which means that the 2024-25 season could very well be his last if that's what he wants. That would explain the whole sense of rushing the whole draft situation, but if that's the case then it's unfortunate because is this whole process then about Bronny or is it about LeBron? And what happens after LeBron retires? The media is already milking every Bronny moment and trying to use it for content and engagement that relates to LeBron, like we saw in that LeBron interview at the Team USA training camp, which was, uh... Um, I don't know if people really understand Bronny. He doesn't care. I actually cared a little bit when I came in. I wanted people to like, like me, and Bronny doesn't... He doesn't give a But the hype will eventually die down, and if a lot of this is being done for LeBron and to get the two to team up, then they run the risk of hindering Bronny's development by drafting him now, when he could use an extra year or two at the college level to become NBA ready. He's also being drafted to a franchise that has shown to be a high pressure environment that affects the development of young star players, like we saw with Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, and D'Angelo Russell, who all struggled as young players and later had their best seasons after leaving the Lakers. But I don't want to act like Bronny getting drafted to the Lakers is bad on all fronts because all the moves that Clutch Sports made could also be strategic in a way that allows Bronny to maximize the window of opportunity at an NBA career. After all, LeBron waited for the Lakers to draft Bronny before signing his new deal and what he was doing was ensuring that they pick him. Bronny also got signed to a deal with 4 years guaranteed, which means that he won't be fighting to stay in the league for at least a couple of years. The 2024 offseason might have been the last time that LeBron had that kind of leverage, so maybe that's the reason why the whole process seemed a little bit rushed. And on another positive note, by being drafted to the NBA, Bronny gets the chance to focus completely on basketball without the outside responsibilities that college athletes have. And I think we can all agree that out of all the teams in the NBA, the Lakers are the number one organization that would prioritize Bronny's development. And with LeBron there, it also protects him from a lot that could be coming his way like opponents coming after him or even just hostile teammates. And if LeBron was not in the league right now, Bronny wouldn't have that kind of safety net. So maybe that's another reason why he entered the draft so early. But that's it for the video. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this topic and about Bronny being in the league. Until next time, peace.